Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today we're going to install Windows on my Trash Can 2013 Mac Pro, and uh, it could not be easier. We're going to be using the same software I used in my previous video when I installed Windows on my Mac Pro 5.1. We're going to be using Windows Install. And we're going to be using the most recent ISO file from Microsoft. So those are the only two things you need. You do this all in Mac OS. You download the Windows install app. You download the Microsoft ISO file of Windows 11. Or you can use Windows 10 if you want to. Let's get to it. I've got Sequoia installed with OpenCore Legacy Patcher on my Mac Pro 6.1, the trash can. His software supports 10.13 and up. So you get to install Windows all in Mac OS. You don't need a bootable thumb drive. Here is the app. I've already got it downloaded. I will leave the link to the app and the link to the Microsoft ISO files in the video description. Uh, and after we do the install, I'm going to show you how to install the drivers for your Mac Pro 6.1. It's different for every different Mac that you do this on as far as drivers go. It just depends on your graphics cards and your peripherals, etc. So here we are, we've got the Windows install app open. And a quick note, I had this in the video set up to Windows backup initially. You do not want that. We'll talk about that later, but you want to have it on install Windows UEFI. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to partition my hard drive. I have an upgraded hard drive in my Mac Pro 2013. It's a two terabyte Samsung Evo Plus. So we're going to go in here and use Disk Utility. Go to the main volume here. There's my system where Sequoia is installed. There's my Mac OS data. You will not be erasing your data doing this. Uh, as long as you don't reformat the whole drive. What we're going to do is we're going to add a partition. Our drive is already formatted in APFS. There it is, APFS. So we're going to add a partition, not a volume. We're going to add a partition. Uh, we're going to give it a size though. We're going to say one terabyte. And then we're going to hit the plus sign, add partition. So now we got one terabyte for Mac OS and we got one terabyte for Windows. And in this little partition here, that's our EFI that has OpenCore Legacy Patcher installed on it. So there's no threat of erasing that either. But you do want to have OpenCore Legacy Patcher installed, obviously, if you're using an unsupported Mac OS. So we're going to come in here. We're going to call it Windows 11. I'm using a wired keyboard and I am connected to the internet via Ethernet. Windows 11. And we're going to format it in XFAT GUID partition map. Okay, so you want to format it in GUID partition and XFAT. There we go. We're going to hit apply partition. Resizing startup volume will cause this computer to stop responding. Okay, and there we are. We are adding our partition to install Windows 11 on. We'll let it do its thing. All right, we are done partitioning. We're not going to quit out of disk utility yet because we need some important information. Make sure you are selected on your Windows partition. You do not want to be selected on your data or your snapshot of your Mac system. You want to be on your Windows partition that you created. And it says disk 0 S4. That is where we're going to be installing Windows on our partition that we created, which is at location disk 0 S4. And this varies depending on how many drives you have in your computer, whatnot. But this is a Mac Pro 6 comma 1, so we only have our one internal drive. I haven't tried installing this on an external drive and booting off it, but I believe you probably can. Not sure about that yet. I may try that next. Okay, so there we are, disk 0 S4. We want to come up to Windows install app and select disk 0 S4. That's important because this is going to erase whatever you set that to. It's going to reformat our XFAT partition in NTFS, which is what Windows needs to be able to boot off it. And we are then going to drag over, which I have on my desktop here, 
our Windows ISO file. This is the full 24H2 ISO file. I had issues with this with my Mac Pro 5 comma 1, but I had no issues doing this with the Mac Pro 6 comma 1. And I actually erased my Windows setup so I could make this video and show you guys how to do it. So hopefully it will work again. <laughs> so we drag that over. Now you can see that it has all the different versions of Windows and you can install whichever one you wanna install. I'm gonna go with Windows Pro, which is index six. So that is the index that we wanna select. You select the one you want. If you have a key for Windows Home, you can use that. I have a key for Windows Pro. That's the one I've been using. And you don't have to have an activation key to install Windows. You can get it later or you don't have to get it at all. So that's the one we're using. And we just click on install and we'll see how long this is gonna take. Because this time on my Mac Pro 5 comma one, I used a compressed version of Windows 11 called Tiny 11. And you can watch that video here <laughs> somewhere up there and uh, if you have a Mac Pro 5 comma one on doing this. I had issues with this full same exact ISO file from Microsoft on my Mac Pro 5 comma one. There was something going on, it just did not like it. And whenever I would first boot into Windows, I would get an error, the blue screen of death, and could not get past it no matter what I tried. So I used Tiny 11 and that cleared up my problem. Should you use Tiny 11? That's sort of, you know, use at your own risk um, because it is a less secure version of Windows where this is the full regular Microsoft version. It worked fine on the six comma one here on my trash can. So I'm hoping doing this again, it's gonna work again. So let's just get to the install. And I'm gonna pause this and we'll be back when it's finished. Okay, so we're done and it took 20 minutes, nine seconds, which is a lot longer than it took on my Mac Pro five comma one with tiny 11. But now we can just quit out of the apps and there it is. Okay, so before we boot into Windows, we're gonna grab our drivers. So the way to do that is you launch Boot Camp, which is in your utilities folder, applications, utilities, Boot Camp Assistant. Now you don't need, we're gonna put it in our dock here, you don't need to install Boot Camp whatsoever. You're just using this to grab the drivers for your Mac Pro 6 comma 1, the trash can. There go those fighter jets again. And we're gonna download Windows support software. And we're just gonna put that on our desktop. Or you could write it directly to a thumb drive. I already have these on a thumb drive, so I'm not gonna bother downloading them. But that is what you need to do. Download Windows support drivers by going to action, download Windows support software. So you can use the bootcamp drivers to get all your peripherals working with the Mac Pro 6 comma one. But we are going to remove the AMD and Nvidia drivers from the bootcamp drivers folder. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So we're going to reboot into Windows. Okay, so there are two choices. I can boot into Sequoia or I can boot into Windows. Now we're just going to select Windows. Now what's weird is when I did this on my 5 comma 1 with the full ISO file, I could not get this far. I'd instantly get the blue screen of death. I still don't know what the problem is, but it's not a problem with the 6 comma 1. It could be that I have, you know, modified stuff in my 5 comma 1 like a different graphics card, but as you can see, we're booting right into the full 24H2 install of Windows 11. And there we go, we're in. So we're just gonna go through all the prompts. I'm not gonna bother showing you this stuff, but the point is it's so painless. <laughs> it used to be much more difficult to install Windows on your Mac, even with Boot Camp. Okay, so we're in, finally. It always takes a while to log into Windows. And that's why you should use the Windows install app. Once you get your Windows set up the way you want it, once you get your drivers in there, create a backup using the app. And you can always restore from the backup without having to go through this whole process of installing Windows from scratch. 
It's awesome. And I recommend doing that before you download, you know, 10 games that are going to take up, you know, 60 gigs a game kind of situation. So we're going to do drivers now. Basically, you can install all the boot camp drivers, but you do not want to install the graphics drivers. So we're going to go. Uh, one thing I'll show you here quickly is when I first get into Windows, I always do this. I open up the File Explorer. You got to Alt click on the Windows to get to File Explorer. Where the heck is it? There it is. File Explorer. And I'm going to find my This PC and put that on the desktop. Create shortcuts. So there it is. Now I can get to my hard drives easily, just like you can on your Mac. And I'm gonna put it over here because that's where my Mac drive usually shows up. And there is my thumb drive with all my utilities on it. So we're gonna open that up and we're gonna find my boot camp drivers, which are in here. I got them for all my Mac Pros, my 5161 and 71. So we're gonna go to the 61 and we're going to look at these drivers for a minute. I can't remember if I already removed certain drivers. Yeah, I don't see AMD or N NVIDIA. Normally in this folder, you would see AMD and NVIDIA folders. You wanna delete those. You do not wanna install them, but you can just remove them and then install everything else. Yeah, so there's no AMD folder, there is no NVIDIA folder. I already deleted them. You will have to delete them first. And then once you're done, you can go in and install the boot camp drivers. You open this folder, boot camp, and you hit setup. And you say yes. And it's going to install everything you need except for your GPU drivers. Let's go look at the device manager while this is going on. Because Windows finds hardware and installs drivers for you when you first install it. Device manager. And we're gonna look at this. Okay, so right there, we got a warning sign on our Microsoft Basic Display Adapter, right? We don't have an AMD driver in here yet. And we got a bunch of other stuff that's giving us some warnings. That's why we wanna use the bootcamp drivers. We wanna install them for our Wi-Fi, for our Bluetooth. Wi-Fi is already working. So our Wi-Fi is working before we even installed the boot camp drivers, but I believe that our Bluetooth is not. Let's add a device. Couldn't connect. Turn on Bluetooth. Bluetooth is turned off, even though it says it's on. So we need our Bluetooth drivers from the installer. Now we're done with the boot camp installs and we're gonna restart the computer and that will finish installing the drivers. And then we gotta go to AMD's website and grab a specific driver. You cannot use AMD Adrenaline with the old D500s. Those are workstation graphics, the D300, the D500, the D700. Okay, so we're gonna grab our AMD drivers. You don't wanna grab the latest Adrenaline drivers. They don't work with the old Mac Pro, the 2013. We wanna go to graphics here. Then we're gonna hit Mac Graphics. Then we're gonna click on Apple Boot Camp and hit Submit. And as you can see, our driver that we need for the 2019 is not in here. We have to dig down deeper and we're gonna to go to Previous Drivers. And we're gonna scroll down here and the one we want is right here, which came out in 2022. It says it's for Windows 10, but it works in 11 as well. There is the Mac Pro 2013. This is the driver we want. There it says the Mac Pro 2013 amongst other Macs. And it is the Boot Camp Unified Driver R5 for Windows 10. Okay, but it works in 11 as well. That's the driver we want. That's your best driver. And that's currently going to our downloads folder. Okay, there it is. And we're gonna run the setup file. And you're gonna see, this is like an older version of Adrenaline. Okay, so this is what it should look like. It says it was released on 11.11.21. Installing the drivers. And I believe this is the most current driver you can grab for 
your dual D300, D500, and D700. And we're going to restart to finish the AMD driver install. We're going to go to our device manager. You can see our adapters look happy. There's no exclamation point there. And there we are, folks, dual D500s. And that's the way it should look when you're done installing the drivers. And basically, we're done. I'm showing you this whole process because some people have had issues with their administrative password when using the Windows install app. This is not an app from the App Store, so you have to grant it permission to be able to run on your Mac. So we're going to hit download and it just takes a couple of seconds before the download starts. It's a very small app, so it downloads in a few seconds. And there it is in our downloads folder. And we're going to grab it and move it to our applications folder. And then we're going to move it again and put it in our dock for easy access. Then before we launch it for the first time, go to your system preferences and open up privacy and security. And now we're going to launch the app for the first time. And we get this warning. Apple could not verify Windows install is free of malware that may harm your Mac or compromise your privacy. Just hit done, go back to privacy and security and scroll down to the bottom. I don't know why Apple has to hide this and you'll see Windows install was blocked to protect your Mac. Click on open anyway and then again open anyway and it's going to ask for your administrative password, the same password you use to log into your Mac. And this is probably where the glitch has been for some people. So you put in your administrative password. You have to be the administrator and the user account has to be the administrator. And you type in your user password if it's not in there already. And if you're not comfortable with it, then just don't use the app. You know, there's a lot of outside apps from the App Store that you use on your Mac that you have to grant it permission to run on your Mac. Please subscribe. Please give me the thumbs up because I'm trying to do more videos. And I will see you in the next Mac Sound Solutions video.